LV55 Media LLC presents Private Investigations Read Aloud, a chronological scene-by-scene -scene read through of the Private Investigations Book 1 and Book 2 novel for the viewing community. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. The few sounds of laughter along with the informal exchange of spoken words can't dominate the constant whirring sounds of the espresso machines in the local coffee shop. At a table near the entrance since local college student Noah Aquino, seemingly busy working on his laptop computer with a pair of earbud wires running from his ears to his phone. At a nearby table, Tsunami football player Donald Suggs sits with close friends Stacy Young and Sheila Rawlings laughing and joking in conversation. Coffee shop assistant manager Janice, with a towel draped over her shoulder, comes from behind the counter carrying a tray of beverages and walks up to their table. Here you go guys, she cheerfully says, placing the beverages down. Janice quickly wipes down a nearby table before walking away. At another table on the opposite side of the coffee shop sits girlfriend Deandra Hall with her lawyer boyfriend Curtis Wright. Deandra slowly sips her beverage while resting her hand on Curtis's forearm as he reads a big thick red covered book. As Stephen enters the coffee shop he slightly adjusts his computer bag that slung over his shoulder before walking over to the service counter and looking up towards the menu board. After several moments, Jonathan walks up to the service counter and looks directly at Stephen, waiting to take his order. Hey Stephen, what's your pleasure today? Jonathan asks, as Stephen, still looking at the menu board, finally looks towards Jonathan and places his order. Hi Jonathan, I, uh, I'll try one of your large dark chocolate mochas today. Okay, that's one large dark chocolate mocha. That'll be $3.90. Stephen pays for his beverage, then walks over and places his computer bag on a nearby empty table before sitting down. He purposely faces the counter with his back directly against the wall. Stephen pulls out his computer, opens it, then proceeds to check for emails before replying. Just as Stephen finishes typing, he observes Victoria Hahn, a city assistant DA, dressed in a pinstripe navy blue pantsuit, sky blue blouse and navy blue high heels arrive at the service counter carrying a gray briefcase. Hello there, what can I get you this morning? Jonathan asks, smiling, looking directly at her. Hi, I'll have a medium loose leaf hot tea please, she replies, for here. Okay, that's one medium loose leaf tea. That'll be 2.30. Victoria pays for her beverage. I'll bring it right over to you. Thanks. Stephen observes Victoria walk over to a nearby table a few feet away from him to sit down. He immediately pulls out a small notepad and a pen from his laptop bag, makes several entries, closes the notepad before continuing to send another email to Blaine. Possible new merchandise stacked long brown locks, five six buck twenty five photo coming soon. After sending the email, Stephen logs into the Alliance surveillance program, presses several keys on his laptop, and begins surveying the screen closely. After several moments, he accesses another program and pulls up the screen to the room Lisa's being held hostage in to check on the kidnapped victim, but is suddenly startled when Jonathan sets his beverage down on the table in front of him. Here's your dark chocolate mocha, Jonathan says, forcing a startled Stephen to quickly close his laptop screen before looking at Jonathan. Ah, uh, thanks Jonathan, Stephen states, obviously nervous, causing Jonathan to smirk. You okay there, bro? Uh, yeah, I'm fine. Stephen purposely changes the subject. Hey Jonathan, when you gonna let me do a demonstration for you on our new Alliance 7500 security system? Jonathan immediately holds up his hand, shutting down Stephen's offer while slowly shaking his head. We went through all this last month, Stephen, and the month before. I can't afford a new system right now. Ah, oh, come on, Jonathan, Stephen sarcastically insists. 
I can get you a pretty good discount if you sign up by Jonathan interrupts Stephen from speaking. I already told you I'm happy with the current system. I don't need a new one. Look, I got to get back to work. As Jonathan turns and walks towards the service counter, Stephen takes a sip of coffee, then opens his laptop computer again and checks in on Lisa for a few moments. But his concentration is interrupted again when he observes Layla Ahmadi and Shannon Mitchell, both wearing gray hospital scrubs, enter the coffee shop. After arriving at the service counter, they both momentarily look up at the menu board while continuing their conversation. I couldn't believe it when he said I was the one with the attitude. Just because I refused to go out with him, Layla says, causing Shannon to smirk while shaking her head. He's just a big jerk, that's all, her friend replies. You know he always makes it a point of stopping by my cubicle whenever he's in the area just to talk. Ooh, doesn't his breath smell just like a sewer, Layla quips while grimacing. Oh my god. It's way past the sewer, Shannon wisecracks. I even offer him a breath mint every time he comes around. Do you think he takes one? No. Both Layla and Shannon snicker. That's why he's a jerk, Layla quips again, as they both stand in front of the order counter, waiting their turn. Jonathan, busy helping to fill orders, finally turns and walks up to the counter and looks towards both young women. Hello, ladies. What can I get you? Hi, I'll have a medium vanilla bean latte, Layla says. She then looks towards Shannon, who is still staring at the menu board. Shannon finally looks at Jonathan and smiles. And I would like a medium Americano, she states in a flirtatious tone, causing Layla to smirk. Okay, that's one medium vanilla bean latte and one medium Americano, Jonathan replies. That'll be 680. Shannon glances towards Layla then reaches in her purse. I got this, she announces. After Shannon pays for the beverages, Jonathan turns and walks away. Shannon momentarily stares at Jonathan's butt, then looks towards her friend and raises her eyebrows. Layla, smirking, leans in towards Shannon before speaking in a low voice. Oh my God, you got the hots for him, don't you? Layla exclaims while smirking. Well, so do you, her friend sarcastically whispers back. Think you can handle him? Layla questions, still smiling. I'd sure like to try, Shannon boastfully answers. He sure got a fine looking pair of squib cakes. As Layla and Shannon both snicker again, Layla's phone rings, causing her to open her purse and pull her phone out to answer. Hello? Hi, Mom. No, I'm not coming home right after work because I already made plans to hang out with friends. Layla, appearing annoyed, scoffs, then rolls her eyes while looking towards Shannon, then points towards the exit door, speaking in Farsi while walking. <sighs> I don't care about that right now. Oh, really? Hold on a minute. Because I'm walking outside. Stephen picks up his pen, flips open his small notepad again, jots down more notes, then closes the pad and lays his pen on the table before picking up his coffee and taking another sip. To learn more about Sam Makino and the many other characters involved in these mysterious, intriguing, suspenseful, and coincidental fiction stories, purchase a copy of Private Investigations, Book 1 and Book 2, in one volume by visiting Doran's Publishing, available both in softcover and ebook formats, also available at Amazon Books and Barnes & Noble.